الحمد لله خالق الأنام المحمود سبحانه أبدا على الدوام حث الناس على المحبة والوئام وندبهم إلى صلة الأرحام وحذرهم من القطيعة والخصام أشهد أن لا إله إلا هو وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله نبي الرحمة ورسول السلام وعلى آله وصحبه الكرام ما تعاقبت الليالي والأيام وانقضت الشهور والأعوام ثم أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters I can't express how grateful I am to be in front of you for the third time on a third Friday in a row to see all these awesome faces that are gathering together just for the sake of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the biggest honor ever to me and to, and to make sure that it's a big honor to me and I want to use it the right way I'm still alive and to make sure that we use these very very few minutes together in a very very wise manner to be wise not to be smart if you remember the first time we mentioned being wise means learning from other people's mistakes so the first Jum'ah we spoke about the importance of the most important two people in your life or let's say the most important person which is your mother and your father in the second Jum'ah we spoke about the importance of the relationship between you and Allah and how you look at what Allah gave you and today we will extend it a bit further we'll go outside the circle to look at your relatives or to look at everyone else around you what can we learn from that so there is actually a disease or I can say big weight that the majority of us are carrying on their shoulders il y a un très grand fardeau que la majorité parmi nous sont en train de porter sur leurs épaules what is it? Is it visible? No. But how come it's not visible? I'm sure everybody's asking, what is Bishara talking about now? I'm sure at least one person among us here today. In the morning, you started your day joyful. You came to a point where someone in the street, in school, at work, anywhere did something bad to you what happened because of that event because of that thing that happened to you what happened you built up on negative emotions negative energy that I won't forgive and you kept that with you that event took only one or two minutes one two minutes then the person is gone but you're still holding on how you felt because of that incident you continue till the whole time, till Asr time. You come back home, you're frustrated, you're bitter. Your mom or your wife or your sister or your brother, anyone asks you, what happened? Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé? Non, mais vraiment, il y a une personne qui m'a fait na 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 le matin. And because of that, you are actually carrying that weight with you. You come after Risha, before you sleep, you go back to bed. You're still bitter, you're still angry. Why? Because that person in the morning did one thing for you for one minute, but you let the impact of that to be carried with you for your whole day. But let's go further. The reason why I believe that this subject is important was actually triggered in my head because of one incident that happened five weeks ago here in Montreal. I met two cousins, they were actually in the middle of an argument, very tough one, because of no matter what reason. What happened is the first one is saying, um, dear cousin, it was in Arabic, it was saying like Ibn Ammi, which means dear cousin, forgive me, forgive me, Samehni, and Ibn Adam, Ibn Adam Khata, every human being is actually it's possible to, to commit mistakes. Forgive me. What did the other person say? What did the other cousin say? Can you imagine? 
He said in Arabic, word by word, which means what? I won't forgive you and I'll see you in front of Allah on the day of judgment. Je vais jamais te pardonner et je te verrai devant Allah le jour du jugement. Subhanallah. What happened? Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé? What happened? Because, because of whatever it is on earth that we say that I won't forgive. That no. It's impossible for me to forgive. Before we dig deeper and see exactly what is the impact on us as human beings, let's see what is the impact of that on our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because I'm sure each and every one of us comes to pray five times a day, gives, and also at the same time gives zakah, fasts, and for whoever was possible for him to go to hajj, he went to hajj. But okay, let's look. How could that be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Hold that thought with me. A shaitan is the happiest. Do you know why? Le shaitan aujourd'hui, il est le plus, le plus heureux. Why? Because he, he was not able to stop you from coming to the mosque. Alhamdulillah, you're all here. He was not able to. Shaitan was in a crutch. Oh. J'ai pas pu vraiment leur, leur arrêter tous d'aller à la mosquée. Oh, okay, good. From time to time, you were able to just take something out of your pocket and give a zakah. A shaitan will go like, oh, j'ai pas pu l'arrêter aussi de faire zakah. When you were able to fast, not only Ramadan, but Thinein and Khamis, you were able to do it. Quand t'as pu vraiment jeûner, t'as pu, pu le faire. Shaitan at the same time is like, ah, j'ai pas pu l'arrêter. But it came to one point where the shaitan was happy. He was like, oh, <laughs> I got them now. I know where I can stop them. A shaitan did not stop you from doing what you want to do towards Allah, but a shaitan stopped you because of what? A shaitan was happy because he was able to stop you from even your actions, your deeds, to be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? Do we know that every Monday and Thursday, our deeds between those days are presented in front of Allah? Est-ce que nous savons que chaque lundi et jeudi, nos œuvres sont présentées devant Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Okay. But what happens? Qu'est-ce qui se passe en ce point? À ce point? Every person who did not associate anything with Allah would be forgiven. That's granted. From who? Not from me. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَّا لَمْ تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا غَفَرَ الدُّنُوبَ إِلَّا شَخْصًا Sauf deux personnes Except two people What's their mistake? Everybody is like, oh, no, I didn't do anything wrong The other person, no, I didn't do anything wrong I won't forgive him, he won't forgive him No, 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 we, would, we, won't, we won't actually go anywhere No, I have my pride why, why would I actually forgive him? What happened at that point? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say أَنْظِرُوا That means that's the point we will verify. That argument, it took more than three days? Okay. When, when did it start? That's when we find some tough questions coming. Some people will just say, oh, I'm very good, I'm very human, very good human being. Like, I'm, I'm very in, I'm in peace with everyone, except who? I have a cousin or I have a friend that I don't talk to him. I don't even say salamu alaikum for the past five years. For the, five, for the past 10 years, I won't even say salam to that person. Why? Because of such and such and such and such. I will not. Je vais jamais dire, même salam alaykum, je vais pas dire ça à cette personne. Pourquoi? Il m'a fait ça, 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 ça. But imagine, if at that point, when your deeds are presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your deeds from that point, if they tell you for the past five years, there is no prayer that is even accepted for you. Imagine. Every time, every day, you pray, you fast, you do everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do. You, even not, even do or not, you don't only do, do the obligations, you even do what's, like, what, what is mustahab. You only do even the sunan, you do everything. But at one point, that's not even accepted from you. Why? Because of that single thing that you have. That no, I will not greet that person. I am, I, I, I. Who are you? Who am I? That's why shaitan is really, really happy when he's, what? he was able to inflict these kind of what? ideas in between people. Not even forgiveness. 
You're not able to. But sometimes, this subject is so big, especially when you come to talk about it with relatives, Salat al-Rahim, when you come to talk about your kinship, or also when you come and talk about it with what? With the generality of people. But I'll try to really summarize, because all our deeds are actually dependent on this. Because sometimes when you forgive, sometimes you find people like, oh, I forgive him. No, so that means I am actually what I am, I'm having the upper hand. No! You're not doing it for him. Tu fais pas ça pour l'autre personne, tu fais ça pour toi. You do it for yourself. Why? Because if you don't do that, remember, your deeds will not even be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you do it for who? Let's take examples. Someone will say, oh, um, Bishara, you can never imagine what this person, for example, X person has done to me. He's hurt me so bad. He has done such and such and such and such and such. We can keep listening to the story. But let me just compare. Right now, we are all, all of us here. Let's listen to what I will say. And if, by any chance, any of you has a story and has a problem with someone, listen to this very well. And then compare, then see if at that point you would have to forgive or if you would have to hold on to it. And if it's worth that you sacrifice all your good deeds just because of that specific incident with someone. Aisha radiallahu anha, as siddiq abid as siddiq. I think the majority of you have heard of the story of the defamation. Right? Okay. But at that point, when Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the father of Aisha radiallahu anha, just to make the story short, when he found out that that story was already made up by his own cousin, and he, what, he wanted to do the same thing, he wanted to do, oh, this would happen to me from the closest person to me? No, I will never forgive him. What was the ayah then? For that decision that Abu Bakr al-Siddiq made, he was ordered by the ayah. وَلَا يَعْتَلِ أُولُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعْتِ عَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا Which means what? Not only to forgive, but to do good by the person who even did them harm. Listen, it's not only telling you, Allah did not only order you to forgive, no, just forgive the person and that's it, no. Forgive and also do good by that person. Who? Who can tell me right now that the problem that the problem that you could have right now with someone or the incident or the harm that the person has done to you could be greater than the defamation of the mother of the believers Aisha radiallahu anha what you have right now if you have something is it bigger than this? no another example the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam when he came back to Mecca Prophet Mecca what happened? His family, people from Quraysh, they were waiting. They were waiting actually what? They knew what they have done to him when he was there and how he was tortured. They were waiting to get their next cut. Khalas, it's over. We're waiting to be, to be actually slaughtered. But when Muhammad والسلام, came, what did he say? Idhabu fa'antumu talaqa. Subhanallah. After all this, what happened? Just tell them clearly, go. You're free. He forgave them. What we have right now, the small things we have, I'm driving, my, I'm driving down the road, and someone just like, you know, I try to bump on me, oh, I start and make the whole scene up there, and my life is actually, will stop just because of that small incident. Oh. Is that bigger than what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa faced? Than what Aisha radiallahu anha faced? Okay, let's, let's take a last example about Yusuf alayhi salam. 30 years, 30 ans, Yusuf alayhi salam, I take what? Well, I cannot say what he saw. What did he not see? 30 years. Then, when his brothers came to him, and he was given all the authority on, and power on earth at that point, what did he say? لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم. Subhanallah. With all these stories, right now we come to very small things that happen between a cousin, between a brother and sister. We start right now, like, oh, I will not forget. Last week, when you talked about the, the mother, 
the importance of the mother in someone's life, and also the, or we talked about the parents in general. One of the brothers, he came up to me with a question. He told me, um, by the way, um, I know a friend that what? That has an issue with his father. And his father was not good to him, or his father did such and such, and that's why he's also giving him uh, equal, uh, give, doing it to him equally. So at this point, what do you think? Just because my father actually did something to me, or my father uh, was, uh, like had some shortcomings, that's when I would start what? Say no, because he did this to me, I would do that. Car mon père n'a pas, pas pu faire ceci pour moi, ou bien mon père a fait un, deux, trois pour moi, moi aussi j'ai le droit de faire du mal. Do you think that's right? That's the right attitude? No? Okay. So at this point, clear this. And always when I share something that's really dear to my heart, it's not just like for the, for the sake that we just listen. It's just to show you by a living example that it is something doable. Forgiving is not something that's actually someone just uh, like something that you were born with. Tu seras pas né avec quoi avec la capacité de pardonner. You can't. That's something that you develop with time. Personally, I'm still developing that way in myself every single day. Every single day. Sometimes you are driving. Something happens happens to you from other drivers. You find yourself, oh, you want to just like like fall into that trap that oh no. Cool off. I will be like my Cool off. That's not worth it. But let me just share this very small example. It's a personal one. My father, Jibril Idris, passed away in the year 2003. And I had some questions that I wanted to ask him. But at that time, I was young. And he was not even, he was in a different country. And I was always asking myself the question, when would I meet him to ask him those questions myself? Quand est-ce que j'aurai la chance de, de poser ces questions à mon père moi-même? When I was young. But all of a sudden, boom, he's gone. Alhamdulillah, that's destiny. But I still have those questions. I still want to figure them out. Je cherche toujours ces questions, les réponses à ces questions. Can I forgive? No, I was, I was hesitant. Should I forgive him? Because I have the same, the same place where that brother thinks that no, because his father had shortcomings, so that means he has to treat his father the same way. I had the mistake that when he passed away, it took me days just before I opened my mouth and said, Rahimahullah, Allah Rahimahu. Yeah, I had, I had some things in my heart. I told you. Everybody's learning. But at this point, where can I find the answers? I waited a bit. I said, okay, I'll wait. Until I, what, until I grow up a bit, I would be able to have, to, have what, to have answers. And the moment I grew up, the moment I wanted to ask questions, le moment que j'ai grandi et j'ai voulu vraiment hmm, avoir des réponses pour toutes les, toutes les questions que j'avais en tête, boom, the only person that, that was able to give me answers is gone, my mother, 2008. So imagine, from, that, from all those years, 2003, 2008, until 2008. And 19. How do you think I was walking? Who? If you remember at the beginning, I said there is what? There is heavy baggage. It's just like you're what? You're carrying mountains on your shoulders. You're carrying very heavy things on your shoulders. You're trying to walk with it, but it's difficult. If you now you look at someone carrying a mountain, you tell him, come on, why you do that? C'est étrange. Pourquoi tu le fais? You can just drop that weight and be free. But no, I carried that pain. 2003 until 2019. Mais qu'est-ce qui se passe? Oh, yeah, qu'est-ce qui s'est passé? 2019. What happened in 2019? Did something change in the world around me? Nothing. Nothing changed. 2019 was the point that I took the decision to forgive. I took the decision, no matter if my father was right or wrong, I took the decision to drop that weight. J'ai pris la décision dans cette année, 2019, de vraiment de m'en débarrasser de tout ce fardeau. And from then, 
I'm free. Il n'y a pas vraiment une liberté que je sentais plus importante que ça. I was free. I didn't want to look for the answers again. Nobody will give me the answers. But I freed myself. Et c'est pour cela, quand vous pardonnez maintenant, vous ne faites pas ça pour l'autre personne. Vous ne faites pas ça pour, pour n'importe qui qui vous entoure. Vous faites ça pour vous-même. On doit apprendre à pardonner. I'll give an example for our, my young, my young brothers, I might be also my young sisters. If you're 13 or 14, okay, let me just say for example, who is 18? Who is 18 here? 17. Who's 19? Good, 20. Good. I'll give an example, but when I was, when I was around your age, I was exactly 19 years old. One evening, with my friends, we're walking down the road, we're going to a restaurant, we're going to have fun and eat some good food. That was actually in the city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia. We were having a very great time. We were walking with my friend, we were talking, it was a very, very great evening, and all of a sudden, boom, I found myself bumping into someone. So I turned just to apologize. Je me suis tourné juste pour quoi? Pour dire, ah, excuse-moi. And the person started right away insulting. The person started right away insulting in things that I can never mention in the house of Allah. And at that time, I was young. I was 19. I was outrageous. I was just like, what? Ah, ready. The moment he started what insulting, there is an insult that came that he insulted my mother. When someone insults your integrity, ooh. What happened at that point? Did I even think about it? No. Boom, 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 boom. I started on him. What happened? Oh yeah, he stopped at my mother and I started, everybody stops me. No, I, I will finish him. Why? Because he talked about my mother. I will never let that go. And I started again and again and again. All of a sudden, woke. I found myself someone holding my hand. I got what? For the only time in my life, I was handcuffed. But that's not the story. That's not what touches me. That's not the part. About the handcuffs, two to three days, I was cleared from that. Why? Because, because actually I'm a person who practices martial arts and that's, no, 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 that's a story. That's not the story I want to hear about. I want you to hear about. What I wanted to hear about is what stayed with me. Because what happened to the other person, when I saw the other person bleeding, I saw that. And that picture stays with me till today and I regret it. And I will regret it till the end of my life. I regret it. Because of what? One decision. When I was angry, when I was young, outrageous, that I, no, I won't take that. I will, I will do that. I will show that heart. Okay, what happened? That picture is there with me till the end of my life. <coughs> But that was in the year 2002. 2002, I remember. 2010, in my, in, my, in my country, I was in Chad. And subhanAllah, similar incident in the middle of the month of Ramadan. In the middle of the month of Ramadan. People, you know, when they're hungry, so how people are actually coming to be ah, ready, just like, you know, just like waiting for the spark. What happened? Another similar incident, bumping into people, just touching shoulders or things in the market, what happened? You find someone also jumping and, and what? Exploding on you. That was on me. At that point, right away, right away I remembered. I remembered the image. Right away I found myself, I'm remembering the picture of the person that I heard over there. Because I jumped into my feeling that, at that moment and I heard the person, now, oh, 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 cool off. I didn't say a word. I said, Bishara, okay, it's time to learn. I didn't say a word. I was waiting for the person. 45 seconds, 50 seconds. He was just actually insulting. Then all of a sudden, he found something strange. That I'm just insulting. Nobody's responding to me. What happened at that point? I just told him one thing. Forgive me. I put my hand on his shoulder. I said, forgive me. What do you think happened at that point? It's over. Right away, he put his head on the ground. He walked away. It's over. So if I put both incidents, the first incident, when I was outrageous, right away, trying to be young, trying to be very strong, and the second one, I just said what? Forgive me. Let's learn from that. Let's learn from that. Let's learn to forgive. Because we're not doing it actually for other people, we're doing it for ourselves. This subject is, is actually has so many, so many chapters, so many points that we need to cover. If we started for hours, we cannot stop. 
But the main lesson I want us to, to really track and keep today, and I want, to, want us right now to recap. To recap on what? On the three Fridays that we had right now. Because believe me, brothers, believe me, sisters, it's not about just like coming to the mosque, enjoying the halaqah, having good time, going back home, going back to the old routines. No. Whatever, whatever day that passes for you will never come back. This moment, this specific moment, will never come back. We will regret it one day. We will say, ooh, si je savais vraiment, j'allais utiliser ça plus efficacement que ça. So that's why, let's learn. Number one, our relationship with Allah. As we said last Friday, how, what, does that, what does that mean? What do you need to be? Grateful. What Allah say? What did Allah say? Subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, la in shakartum, la azidannakum. There is no barrier. It's straight up. You're grateful, you'll get more and more and more. If you're not grateful for what you have right now, you'll, you're actually closing the door on what's coming your way. Si tu n'es pas reconnaissant pour ce que tu as maintenant, tu es en train de fermer la porte à tout ce qui arrive. À toutes les bénédictions qui sont en route, tu bloques la route. One. Number two. The other Friday, we mentioned about what? About parents. And I don't, I don't think I'll find a way more expressive than really living a timeline. That timeline, put it in your life, not only with your parents, in everything you do. I look at it because every day that, that passes, you're going closer. To what? To your end. You're not, you're not getting any younger. Time goes by so fast. I still can't believe that those days when I was 18, when I was, to, when I was actually 17, when I was uh, 13, that those days are gone long ago. Whew, subhanallah. Can I bring them back? No. It's time to wake up. The third thing is right now how to learn how to deal with others around us. Just let's practice this every single day. People will come your way. People will try you. It's just like someone when someone picks something and throws it at you, it's your turn. C'est ton choix. Si tu veux vraiment le porter sur tes épaules, it's a very big baggage. You take it on you and you keep going with it or you just drop it. What is it? C'est pas toi. It's not your problem. Let's learn from that. Let's practice that every single day. Then after that, if you practice that, let's share with everyone that's, that, that's around us. It's the moment to really be better. It's the, it's the direction of our ummah. If we want to, want to make a better ummah, it's the time to be better individuals. And if you want to be a better individual, you need to practice these three things. Without them, yeah. If you don't practice them, it's very, very like I, I cannot even describe how the road will be hard on you. So I love you in the sake of Allah, and I wish you nothing but the best. The past, uh, this day and the past two weeks were nothing but, but honor to me to be in front of you. But I wish, I wish that we really listen to this very, very, very carefully and from your hearts and really try to apply that in your life. Because I don't find any other way, I don't find any other mean that I can show you how important this is. Sometimes, like in Arabic they say, they have a, a proverb that says in Arabic, the one who has his hand on the fire is not like, is not like the one who has his hand in water. I had my hand in fire. That's why you're coming. You're growing up. I don't want you to have the same thing by coming and learning from your own mistake and putting your hand in fire again. I want you to learn to be that wise person that will stand back and learn from other people's mistakes. Oh, I see. Okay, if for example, Mr. X, Mr. Y, if Bishara, everybody went through that, why would I have to leave that again? Let's learn. Let's move forward. نسأل الله العظيم رب العرش الكريم أن يعلمنا وينفعنا وأن ينفعنا بما علمنا وأن يبارك لنا وأن يبارك لنا جميعا في هذه اللحظات المباركة وأن يعيننا على فعل الثلاثة أشياء التي ذكرناها أولا طاعته والانطياع له وشكره على كل ما رزقنا ثانيا أعاننا الله كذلك على طاعة والدينا إن كانوا أحياء وأن يرزقنا برهم إن كانوا أحياء وإن ما ينتوفوا نسأل الله لهم الرحمة والمغفرة وأن يجمعنا بهم في الجنة وثالثا لا تغادروا هذا المجلس Don't leave this place today I know we are excited to go and play but your goal today we have a goal, action plan I love that The goal today is that if you have something in your heart toward anyone no matter how big or small quel que soit vraiment la grandeur de ce que tu as dans ton cœur pour quelqu'un it's time right now to get out of this door clean you have to forgive, not for you, no, sorry, not for the other person, it's for you. C'est pas pour l'autre personne, c'est pas pour l'autre monde, c'est pour toi. 
believe me. It's been right now three years and a half that I'm free. Why? Because I dropped all the weight that was on my shoulder. J'ai vraiment lâché tous les fardeaux qui étaient sur mes épaules. Je me sens libre. And I really wish that each and every one of you gets out of this door free. Barakallahu feekum.